Hello there. So in the previous part of the chapter, we saw difference between states of matter and difference between kinds of matter. We also saw what were metals and non-metals and we also got into what their properties were. Now let's go straight into the next part of the chapter, which is part two of states of matter. We'll be seeing how we can represent these elements. So this is also important to know how to represent elements. Now elements are represented by symbols. So we have small symbols which we give to elements. Now you all have friends. Don't you give nicknames to your friends to identify them in a simpler manner? It makes it easier for you than calling them by their full name. So same way elements are given nicknames or elements are given symbols by which we can easily identify them. Now the simplest form is by giving the first alphabet of the name of the element like this H is hydrogen, C is carbon, N is nitrogen and O is oxygen. So you see the first alphabets from each of these are given as the symbol. So this is one very simple way of uh, representing elements where the first alphabet is taken and named. Whereas we also have the next type where we have two letter symbols. So what are these two letter symbols? Now when you have two friends whose name starts with the same alphabet A, you can't call both of them A. You have to give two individual nicknames to them, right? So same way when we have two uh, elements starting with same alphabet, if we consider C, this is chlorine and this is calcium. Both of them start from the alphabet C. So you can't give the elements representation as C. So we have to come up with a different term. So we start giving two letter symbols. So we have CL which stands for chlorine. Why didn't we give it a CH? Because CL stands for chlorine. So we skip the H in the center. So it is CL, chlo, chlorine is CL. Calcium is the first two alphabets. This is quite simple. The next one is magnesium, which is MG. Then manganese, which is MN. If we consider under M, both of these start from M. And both of, the, both of these are very easy to get confused with. Many of them get confused as Mg is manganese and Mn is magnesium. Now, if there's a simple way of remembering this, mag, M-A-G, forget the A, Mg is magnesium, M-A-G, mag, magnesium, M-G. Whereas man, M-A-N, Mn, we skip the A, Mn is manganese. So Mg is magnesium, Mn, man, manganese. So this is how you remember the difference between Mn and Mg. So Mg is magnesium, Mn is manganese. Now apart from these two types of representation, we have a third type which is by using their Latin name. We derive the symbols out of their Latin names of elements. Now if you see the example of sodium, sodium as an example, here the symbol for sodium is Na. Now Na is nowhere present in the name sodium whereas we still give the symbol as Na because it's derived from its Latin name called natrium. Natrium is the Latin name for sodium. So this Na is taken from the first two alphabets of natrium. So Na is coming from here. So in future references, wherever you see something in pink and italics, that is the Latin name of that element. Like the next example, Fe, which is ion. In ion, do you see the alphabets Fe? No. Whereas it's coming from its Latin name ferrum. So Fe is coming from its Latin name ferrum. So that's why we call it as Fe. Fe is the symbol for ion which is derived from its Latin name ferrum. So let's look at some examples now which are very important. Symbols of elements with single letters. So these are very simple ones. So if we see sulfur that is the first alphabet is sulfur, so S. Hydrogen, again first alphabet, so symbol is H. Oxygen is again first alphabet, so it is O. Phosphorus, again first alphabet, P. Nitrogen, first alphabet, which is N. Iodine, again is first alphabet, I. Carbon is C. Now, potassium here, 
if you see it is not t but it is k so we must see why is it named as k why can't we name it as p any answers we can't name it as p because p is already present here p is a phosphorus so if we name potassium also p we will get very confused whether we're talking about phosphorus or whether we're talking about potassium so that's why we have this latin name coming in so the latin name of potassium is callium so we're taking the k from callium and we're calling it k so the symbol for potassium is k pot k potassium is callium which is the latin name of potassium so the symbol is k and fluorine the last one is f which is the first alphabet of fluorine so these are the elements which are present in your syllabus so what is a simple way of remembering these without forgetting them so if we abbreviate them into sharp nick sharp nick ending with an f so sharp nick f that will cover all of the elements with single letters in your syllabus so we have sulfur hydrogen oxygen phosphorus nitrogen iodine carbon what is k potassium and fluorine now we'll be considering symbols of elements with two letters we have about 18 elements in your syllabus we will be dividing them into two first nine we will see now and the next nine we will see next so here we have aluminium which is simple the first two alphabets so al is the symbol for aluminium argon again is ar the first two alphabets is given as the symbol gold is au silver is ag now these two are very easy to get confused with we often uh, get confused ag as gold because it has g and au as silver but there's a simple way of remembering it if you see gold gold is symbol of gold is taken from its latin name which is aurum so au is coming from the first two alphabets from its latin name so how do we remember au as gold au because you deserve gold so au is gold au from its latin name aurum silver on the other hand its latin name is argentum so argentum silver is in a mighty hurry it's urgently running somewhere so argentum is the latin name for silver so ag argentum a and g so ag is silver so argentum is silver so gold is au silver is ag next one is bromine which is again quite simple so br is the first two alphabet so br from bromine the next one is calcium again very simple the first two alphabets of calcium is ca so ca is the symbol of calcium chlorine we saw cl is chlorine so we have cl which represents chlorine then we have copper copper is the latin name of copper is cuprum so cu is coming from its latin name cuprum so cu is the first two alphabets of its latin name cuprum the last one in this set we'll see is iron which we already saw previously so fe is coming again from the latin name of iron which is ferrum so if we have to go over all of this again aluminum is al argon is ar gold is au silver is ag bromine br calcium is ca chlorine is cl copper is cu and ferrum which is iron is fe now let's consider the last set if you see the last set of nine elements that we have here the first one is lead which is pb it's not l or ld or something like that it's pb so where is this pb coming from 
So PV is coming from its Latin name, which is plumbum. So it has a very funny Latin name called plumbum. So how do you remember its Latin name as well as its symbol? So it's quite simple. If you poke someone's bum with a lead, it's going to become red like plum. So plumbum is lead, which is PV. So P from the beginning and B from the middle gives you PB, which is lead, the Latin name, plumbum. The next one is magnesium, which we already saw, M-A-G, M-G, magnesium. Next one is manganese, man, M-N is for manganese. The next one is mercury. What is mercury? How is mercury different from every metal that we see? Because this is the only liquid metal found. So mercury, the symbol is HG. So why is it HG? We don't have HG anywhere in the name mercury. So it's coming from its Latin name Hydra Gyrum. So what is Hydra Gyrum? How do we remember Hydra Gyrum? Hydra means liquid. Gyrum is a spherical ball. So if you, or if you remember the image of mercury that we saw it was like a liquid ball on the hand so that's why the latin name is hydra gyrum and its symbol is hg h from hydra and g from gyrum so hydra gyrum hg is mercury the next one is neon you have so many neon colors that we have now in bags and nail polishes and sketch pens so n e is neon the next one is Silicon, S-I from the beginning to alphabets of silicon is the same as the symbol. The next one is sodium. For sodium, we have the first two alphabets from its Latin name as sodium. So N-A is coming from its Latin name natrium. Natrium, N-A is nothing but sodium. So sodium's Latin name is natrium. So the first two alphabets from that Latin name is given as the symbol. The next one is tin. The Latin name is tannum, as a result of which its symbol is SN. It's not TN, but it is SN. So SN is derived from its Latin name tannum. So how do we remember this Latin name? If you remember the movie Stanley Ka Dabba, Dabba means tin box. So tin is tannum. So SN is its symbol. The last one that we have is zinc. Zinc is again quite simple. So ZN. If you notice most of these, we'd like to skip the middle alphabet there. So it's ZN is zinc, not ZI. So many of these examples like that, we like skipping the middle alphabet. So you have zinc where it is ZN. You have manganese, which is not MA, but MN. And you have magnesium, which is MG and not ME. So another simple reason why we skip the middle alphabet is because both of these here have the same middle alphabet. So if you give MA to magnesium and MA to manganese, we would get confused. So because of these considerations, sometimes we skip some alphabets in the center to give the correct uh, symbol to these elements. So let's just go over them again. Lead is PB. Magnesium is MG. Manganese is MN, Mercury is HG, Neon is NE, Silicon SI, Sodium is NA, Tin is SN, and lastly, Zinc is ZN. So this completes representation of elements. So we've seen so far what is an element. We saw how to differentiate them into metals and non-metals. We saw their properties. Then we saw how to represent elements. We saw single alphabet representation. We saw double alphabet representation. We even saw how to represent them from their Latin names. So this completes the first half of the chapter, Nature of Matter. Thank you.